All right, everybody. This is my O2 Dodge in my uh, super small yard. Hence, getting the camper to, to go out of town. And uh, when we got the camper, I had to air a tire up one time. And uh, I burnt up my pump, a little battery, you know, plug it into the cigarette lighter pump. And I said, well, that's, that's for the birds, you know. I haven't washed my truck in forever. And it's got the seat rip like everybody's got. <clears throat> Anyways, when I uh, had to air up a tire and I burnt my pump up, I said, that's for the birds, man. And I started looking into onboard air and stumbled onto the Jeep guys who were putting these York 210s on their Jeeps. I thought, man, there must be a kit to do that for a Dodge. And, and there is, and it was pretty expensive. And uh, the company, I guess, Kilby was kind of out of business or bought out. Somebody else had them. You know, it was a mess anyways. I was able to get that pulley right there that goes on the alternator from them uh, somewhat begrudgingly on their end, but that's okay, it worked out. I imagine if you couldn't work that out for yourself, a machine shop could probably weld you something together uh, that would make that happen. That's the, the factory alternator bracket right there. I made this quarter inch steel bracket to go on top of it, weld it together real strong, drilled a few holes to bolt it here, and then that's how I adjust the belt tension. And that's a notched little thing there to adjust the belt tension. The bracket is gusseted there on both sides. You can kind of see that side of it right there. And it holds on to it just fine. It's been hanging on there almost a year. Don't move. It is awful heavy. Uh, air is, of course, sucked in from the atmosphere here. And it outputs there. This is my uh, little, I guess we'll call it the crankcase vent for the York. It goes through that and threads into the, the fill right down there. The York you use, of course, because you have a, a little bit of oil that lays in the bottom of it in a sump. I've got mine filled with transmission fluid, which may not be the best for filling tires because there's a detergent, but uh, it works just fine and doesn't really throw that much. I filled uh, my father-in-law's RV tires. And he's got a Class A with 620 pound, 120 PSI, uh, you know, commercial 22 and a half rim basically semi-truck tires. I added 30 or so pounds, they were all low, about 90, and I added about 30 pounds to all of those. And this oil catcher here, you know, it's got just a little bit of foam on the bottom, and that's what it threw. And this compressor worked pretty hard doing that. And that's the purpose of this video, is to talk about the compressor a bit. So it's got a clutch, just like an air conditioner. And I'm gonna explain all this now and then we'll fire it up because you're not gonna be able to hear me talk when we get it running. So that clutch right there fires up just like a normal air conditioner clutch uh, from this control wire, okay? And that is controlled by this air compressor switch just like one at your house. And if you flip the switch, it doesn't work. If you flip it on, it'll come on as commanded. Right now you can see there's 150 pounds of air in the reservoir. I got a chuck here if I want to get to it, um, you know, the unloader. There's a check valve right there so it doesn't go backwards. So it goes from the compressor to the separator, and then it goes into the check valve and the unloader pressure switch. This line goes off to an a air horn under the front bumper, so folks can hear me if I honk while I'm towing the trailer. And then this line right here goes on down to the tank, which is underneath the frame. Let's see if I can't get the camera to, to like that. That's just a five gallon air tank, nothing special. I just went to Lowe's and got some real simple brackets to mount that to the frame. I drilled a couple holes in the frame. There's a safety valve in there I think we can see. Climb under there. Yep, okay. There's the pop-off valve, so nothing explodes. That's real good. This comes from the compressor. That goes into the cab and it feeds the in cab gauge and also it feeds the airbag. So that's teed off in there and I'll explain that in a bit. This is an electronic solenoid uh, controlled by a switch in the cab and it's connected to the bottom of the tank on that little hose right there. 
and to a 90 just so it don't fill up with dirt. And that's how I purge it. So if I'm running it a lot, I can dump the water and oil from inside the cab. Kind of a fun little thing to do for no real reason. And then it comes out of the back of the tank. Get my finger out of the way. And runs up to the bed. And the easiest way I could work it out, let me grab my key, to get air easily. Was that just runs up into here. You got a little gauge to watch it. And then you just have an air check. And that's what you do most of your work from right there. Really convenient way to do it. So that's basically a system overview. Well, that's how it lays in the hood. You can kind of get a sense of it. Plenty of room. Been running it, like I said, almost a year, and I use it quite a bit actually. Um, and I just had to move it. The littlest bit to get that belt tight it was uh, just starting to try to slip just a little bit I did have to relocate if you do have this year Ram the coolant reservoir which is sitting right here was sitting right there and there's plenty of room to tuck it in there you may just want to be a little bit careful with your Freon lines I, uh, I tucked heater hose around all of them you can kind of see if you look real careful you know you want to just make sure they don't uh, they don't contact anything because you don't want to dump all your Freon. And then a little bit of rerouting for the overflow for the coolant. No big deal, real easy. So let's go into cab. We'll look at the controls in the cab and then we'll fire the system up. And that's when it'll get loud. <clears throat> okay, we're in the cab now. It's your basic O2 Dodge. And um, my dash is not all blown up. The previous owner put a pad on the top, which is great. Uh, and then I had to go find the, the cap here. I found a rec truck with one, so I didn't have to pay too awful much. So what I did was I made a, a switch panel because, you know, you always need to hook up six more things. I got some lighting on, you know, like laying around right now. It's going to get moved over here. But for right now, that's my fan for my air conditioner condenser up front. That's that purge solenoid underneath the truck on the air tank. That is to, to let my air horn work, and it's just a uh, arm disarm kind of thing. The, uh, the actual button for it is right there underneath the steering wheel. <clears throat> and then that is what allows the air compressor to work or not work if the pressure calls for it. The pressure switch is currently set up that it comes on at about 110 PSI cut in, and then uh, cuts out about 145 or 150, something like that. Uh, so if that switch is down, and it's driven off an ignition on circuit. If that switch is down, it doesn't matter what the PSI in the tank is, uh, it will not fire up the compressor. If that switch is up, it'll fire the compressor as long as the pressure calls for it. So uh, if you had a, le a leak or blew a fitting and you're driving, you could at least disable it. <clears throat> then this is the box I built. It's a little bit too big, but it works. That gauge right there on the left is tank pressure. And so, you know, you can see it's sitting at about 145, 148. This is airbags uh, from Firestone. They're sitting on the rear axle for when I tow the, the heavy camper we have. It's wonderful to be able to adjust that. These are just air switches. You can see, you know, that's the left bag. That's the right bag. And they just pull air off this, this main tank gauge right here and then send it right back out. It makes living with airbags real convenient to be able to air up and down that way because you're supposed to run around with five PSI minimum. And when you, uh, you know, when you hook the trailer up, you can adjust it on the fly. You're driving down the road, and the road's real rough. You can add some air. If the road smooths out, you take a little away. The trailer's heavy up front, you know, maybe when you're heading out, load it up with a lot of extra drinking water or whatever, you know, you can add some air, whatever you need. It's a wonderful, wonderful addition, and I'm quite pleased with it, except, like I said, the box is kind of too big. All righty. Well, we're going to fire it up and we're going to put it to use. Okay, we'll put the key in and start the truck. Now, being that the compressor is engine driven, you make more air the faster the, the motor goes. For a long time, I thought, well, I ought to rig up a high idle for the truck and really make some air. But you know, I, I just can't even hardly I haven't worked on it because it makes so much air at idle, it don't hardly 
don't really need it. According to uh, some calculations I found online, at idle I'm making about 9 CFM at 90 PSI, which is a lot of air. I can run my impact on this with no trouble at all, uh, taking tires off if you want. So what I'm going to do is, you can see these light up, and then of course when the ignition's on, I'm going to flip the air on, and then I'm going to hit the purge and just open up a quarter inch. That opens up a full quarter inch port line on the bottom, and we'll just watch the tank pressure as I do that. That's a five gallon tank, and you can see it's recovering quite quickly. And it'll cut itself right off about right there. Don't know if you'll be able to hear that on the video uh, when the little unloader up front kicks off. So we'll drain it out again. Now it's already clicked on, and it's working against itself right now. see how fast it recovers and that's just at idle. The truck's idling at 800 RPM. There you have it. So if you air up tires, if you're uh, you know if you're uh, you know if you're running tools or airing tires up or doing anything like that you know, it, I have yet to do anything to it that it can't really keep up with. It, uh, it it holds its own really well, and I'm quite pleased with it. It's a lot of work, um, mostly because I had to make everything and, and make it all work, but, you know, it, that, it was well worth it. I, I couldn't be happier with that. Uh, the York I paid $40 for. Um, pressure switch for the air compressor uh, it's just a standard unit like out of a house air compressor and air pressure switch I was uh, like 15 bucks and lots of brass fittings and lots of little parts like that and that adds up maybe 50 bucks there the tank I got off Craigslist because I'm cheap uh, and I think I paid like 30 bucks for that um, so lots of little bits and pieces otherwise you know like this gauge is probably 10 or 12 bucks off Amazon it's a nice spot it's a <clears throat> nice vi air gauge um, it's kind of funny because these guys use it on those electric pumps and this is like a whole bunch faster than that but the whole project I've, I've got less than 150 bucks in for sure not counting the airbags it's a little bit different you know they cost a little bit more than that but it all works together it works together real well it's been very reliable hadn't caused me any issues like I said it's been on the truck nearly a year and I, I tightened it up just once because the belt began to stretch just a bit should be good for a while now we'll go outside and uh, I'll empty it out real good and then we'll go outside and you can watch it run and watch the, uh, the clutch kick out. So I'm going to purge it and we'll drop it all the way to empty. And then we'll go outside and we'll watch, the, we'll watch it run and then turn itself off. probably good to empty this. I haven't emptied it in a while. Down here in Florida where we live, there's a lot of moisture in the air. There it goes. Alrighty. Let me turn purge off. And I turn that on, it's going to click on. So, we'll jump outside and watch it run.